Hey Victoria 3 fans, let's talk about a popular mod that's out there and then some strategies on how to have more money, less revolution, in this case, booming industries. First of all, the mod. Military logistics and stockpiles from Scarily After Dark is a really interesting concept and it's been getting a lot of attention in the workshop mod area. However, it's a work in progress and I'm working with the mod maker. I'm offering some feedback. Other people are doing the same thing. I'm not the only one. He says there's going to be a few more weeks then he's going to have a new version. We'll see what it's like. Right now, it's, it's interesting to see how it is impacts play. Uh, from my personal experience, the current version actually cost me a little bit more than what it should, so I'm, I've turned it off. But I think it's a great idea, and I think this is something that might actually make its way into the uh, in, into a later patch for Victoria 3. This is a really cool tool, military logistics and stockpiles. But if you get involved with it, just understand it is a work in progress. In a few weeks, there should be some new changes. Looking forward to it. All all right, let's talk about more money, less revolution, and getting our industries to boom. We have just discovered nitroglycerin. This is awesome stuff. We can blow up more things in the mines and be more productive. The catch is that the earlier explosive industry was not in high demand. I've only got two of those buildings, and right now they're only making uh, a small amount of explosives. If I convert to the new method, it's going to give me 60 more explosives. Oh, good. That's nice to know. But it also says the substitution is going to cost me. It'll make me less profitable. Oh, whatever shall I do? Well, actually, this is not true. This is based on current information. Current consumption, yeah, if I add more explosives where I don't have much demand for them, I'm going to be losing money. They're barely breaking even. But when I look at my mines, ooh la la, I can click on here, see that if I go to nitroglycerin, aha, this one becomes more profitable. 611 more pounds per week, and I'll get 285 more coals. I need to use 95 more explosives. Well, if we recall from the other one, if we upgrade, we're going to get 60 more. So this would use quite a bit more explosives than we're making now, even if we expand production. Checking on the iron mines, oh my gosh, even more productivity. That, that's great. And also 95 more explosives. If I upgraded both coal and iron, I would need about three, four more explosive factories. Lead mines give me a net loss, substitution minus 402, but I do make more lead that way. And if I expand my armaments industry, that might be more important. As it is, I'm only going to make 48 more lead, so I only need 20 more explosives. I don't have that many lead mines compared to my coal and iron mines. Sulfur mines, pretty much the same story. I've only got five of them. It's, it's like a wash. Honestly, when it's that low of a substitution amount, either plus or minus, it's break even. But I do wind up with more sulfur, which, interestingly enough, needs to go into explosive production. Aha! So if I make more sulfur, I'm going to be able to make more explosives. I will need more explosives to make more sulfur, but the more sulfur will help me make more explosives than that. This is important. Again, it looks like, oh, I'll take a loss, but I'm going to need that sulfur when I'm making more explosives for my iron and coal mines. And for my gold mines, uh, yeah, I've got a lot of gold mining. <laughs> 18 already and 5 under construction. Let's just say I declared an interest in South Africa and got real lucky. Ran the table, conquered Reichstadt and Transvaal and Zulu, and now I've got a lot of gold and a seaport to pipe it out through. I definitely want to make a lot more gold. That's, that's clear. And if I get 90 more explosives, then I'm going to generate 7.53k more profits per week. That's better than my iron. That's the best turnaround I've got. And given that I'm at minus 2.61k per week, I mean, I'm just about to be able to break even while I'm having full, full-blown construction. I would love to be able to turn a profit for a while as I'm producing all this additional stuff because with those additional profits, I'll be able to expand my army and then crush Austria, become North German Federation and then Germany and then conquer the world. I mean, I mean, if I have more money, I am going to have more prosperity in my kingdom, empire, whatever. That means less revolution. 
But it also, yes, it does mean I can support a greater military effort. And even though I could potentially do it right now, have a big army, once I activate them and they are using a lot of resources, then I'm going to drain my cash reserves very quickly. I've got right now 12.7 credit borrowed out of 15.2 million maximum. That means in the event of a war, it's got to be very short or very small or both if I expect to win it. Going to war with Austria will probably be neither, especially since I like to grab land off of Austria, which takes a little bit longer to win the war on. And if I've got another country nearby that decides to join in, I'm in deep trouble unless I have a lot of extra money. So I need to get out of debt, build a bigger army, keep my people happy, and all of that requires expanding my industry. When we consider how expanding industry both increases profitability and increases standard of living, we really do get a one-two punch. It's almost better to build your economy than it is to go off and conquer something because of that economic impact. And when you do go off and conquer things, you want to make sure you get that area's industry back up to speed as quickly as you can to avoid rebellions, but also to increase your overall standard of living and, pro and profitability. As it is, I've already maxed out on my taxes here. I, I could cut back in a few other areas, absolutely, but I don't want to. I want to be able to just cut taxes while keeping these high so I have increased benefits with government wages and military wages because cutting taxes is going to be one of the fastest ways to boost my overall standard of living. Looking at it now, it's at 10.2. It was a lot higher before. I'd like to get back up. I'd like to get out of these red areas and get my people to where they're no longer struggling. And for that to happen at this point in history, I've got to get my economy booming. So let's add more explosives. I'm going to add 60 more. I get a warning that the Brandenburg factory will have very low productivity. I'm not worried about that. They're about to get into high demand. We'll hit continue. And already it says this is a dumb idea. You've, you've, <laughs> you're you using too many... Uh, you no, know, no, you, you you don't have enough demand for all these explosives. You just you just wasted money. I mean, I look at my market. I, I'm I'm up by 73 on explosives. This is this is insane. But now we go over to gold mines and nitroglycerin, and in fact, now that the explosives are even cheaper, my substitution goes even higher. Yes. Let's use those explosives there. Now we did have plus, or we were minus 70, and this will use 90 more. So we'll need about 20 more to meet the exact demand, but it's okay if they're a little expensive. That'll help that factory keep going. And then that'll help us to expand it and then allow us to get our iron going and then more sulfur and more coal. And yeah, we're going to get all this benefit from increasing our explosives. So let's go to nitroglycerin here for the gold mines. Poof. All right. Already we see that this number has changed. Let's go back to the urban area here. Let's watch the explosive factory. Uh, oh, it's changed. Now it's profitable. Okay, this is good. We've made the switch. And now, yeah, we, we had minus 273, 1.0. This is good. This is good. So the next question is, let's go to those iron mines. Yeah, we could go to nitroglycerin, get that 1.71. Yeah, and we just need 95 more explosives. So the question is, do we build another factory first or do we switch over to nitroglycerin and possibly have a shortage of explosives? Or there could be a third way. Can we import them? Let's check our import routes. Ooh, answer is no. We're not importing these. We need to build our own explosives. So that means if we want to cut over to using nitroglycerin for our iron and coal mines, if we do that right now, we're going to have a massive shortage of explosives. Those industries are going to be harder pressed and they won't be able to produce. Our economy will take a downturn. We're going to want to produce these first. And then once we have those explosives online and the prices have dropped, because of the availability of these explosives, then we can get our iron mines and coal mines going. So maybe I'll build one explosive factory, get my iron mines, and I might be able to also get my sulfur mine squeezed in. Or maybe I'll build two factories, get both iron and sulfur taken care of, and then build one more for my coal mines. We'll see how that goes. All right, so we're going to build more explosive factories. I'll click on the plus. I've got an existing one in the Ruhr and one in Brandenburg. And the only one that says it'll be more profitable would be in Vestphalia. Well, all right, let's build there. I'll hit the Alt key when I go in and it'll get prioritized. So in 27 weeks, we'll see how it is. I'll see you back later on in 1858.
So we built that factory in Westphalia. It's finally up and running, and we're only uh, 31 ahead. Well, let's take a look at our factory there. Oh, here's what's going on. It's not yet completely full up. That means it's going to be producing less than the full amount. And as it increases, we're going to get more and more people, but the productivity is also diminishing because they're making more, and that's dropping the price of explosives. I think we're at a tipping point here. Let's get the demand up for them. Already on sulfur, we can get a bonus there by switching over to that, and that only takes 25 more explosives. Let's do that. And then iron mines are at 2.8 absolutely let's do this now we've got that demand increased let's watch and see what happens to that factory in Westphalia all right we're at 5.4 let's unpause whoa 21.4 19.9 cash reserves are increasing whoa we're doing all right and there's no shortage of explosives that's nice uh, they could be in high demand but there's no shortage of them which means we're not impacting anybody's uh, production or anything like that we're making 11.8 per week thousand that is oh this is good coal mines would be ready to go next we'll need a hundred more explosives there because we've built another coal mine and lead uh, it's kind of low on that we don't really need more lead so i'll just build another uh, explosives factory just for the coal well lead will just come along later or since we're 20 short maybe i'll build two explosive factories and maybe that might be just enough to go over the amount needed to make it where the lead mines will be more profitable to use nitroglycerin yeah let's build two more factories all right back to explosives factory expand oh wow now there's a lot more potential since they are money makers we can get more out of them well if i go to Westphalia, they're ready to go and so is Ruhr. Let's go ahead and utilize our economies of scale. We've got plenty of peasants to get jobs there. I've got universities getting built. These are where they need to go. Let's also prioritize them. I didn't hit the Alt key when I hit those, so i got to go over to the production line and do Alt up arrow. All right, now they're ready to go. I'll see you in another 27 weeks. So this is what it looks like after we've got our factory going. It's, it's higher to 100% because I went ahead and turned on the coal mine and the lead mine. All the mines are now using nitroglycerin, so we're having full demand for it. We're only short by 26 in the market, so it's not an actual shortage shortage. We're able to be fine. The prices for explosives are a bit high about 3% above the base price, which is not bad. The industries using those explosives are showing great profits. They're all in the green. And the explosive factories themselves are also in the green. This is good news across the board. We grew our economy using those explosives. So I hope this shows you how a little bit of careful planning, a little bit of back of the envelope math, and you too can grow your economy. And by growing your economy, you're then going to be able to grow your military, which will grow your empire and allow you to, yes, conquer the world in Victoria 3. I hope you have a wonderful time building out your economy, and I hope to see you on the next installment of my videos. Have a great day. Bye for now.